Today, I want to read to you from Joel chapter 2 and talk to you about something special for everyone. Here we go. Joel chapter 2, verses 28 and 29. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And also on my men servants and on my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days. The book of Joel begins with fearful warnings of judgment, but continues on into glorious promises of restoration. Joel described a restoration that would come closer to his own day, and then also an ultimate restoration. It shall come to pass afterward. This speaks of a greater time of ultimate restoration and blessing. This latter time will be marked by an outpouring of God's Spirit on all flesh, not only selected men at selected times for selected duties. The Old Testament has a rich record of the work of the Spirit, but he was not poured out on all flesh under the Old Covenant. Instead, certain men were filled with the Spirit at certain times and only for certain duties. It was rather selective in the Old Testament. Joseph was filled with the Spirit of God. The craftsmen who built the tabernacle were filled with the Spirit of God. Joshua was filled with the Spirit of God. The judge Othniel was filled with the Spirit of God. The judge Gideon was filled with the Spirit of God. The judge Jephthah was filled with the Spirit of God. The judge Samson was filled with the Spirit of God. Saul was filled with the Spirit of God. And so was David filled with the Spirit of God. But here, Joel looked forward to something greater than all these previous individual and exceptional examples. Joel saw the glorious new covenant when the Spirit of God would be poured out on all flesh. Why, even your sons and daughters and your old men and your young men would all be filled with the Spirit of God. Now, this fulfillment began on the day of Pentecost, When the disciples gathered in the upper room, waiting in Jerusalem for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit that Jesus promised would come. When the outpouring of the Spirit came, the 120 followers of Jesus were all filled with the Spirit, and they began to praise God in other tongues. Jerusalem was so crowded at that time because of the Feast of Pentecost, so a crowd quickly gathered because of the commotion. Those who heard the disciples praise God in these miraculous languages began to mock them, claiming that they were drunk. Peter stood up boldly and set the record straight. The disciples were not drunk at all, but this was a fulfillment of Joel's great prophecy of the outpouring of the Spirit. At first, any Jew of that day might scoff at the idea that 120 followers of a crucified man could be filled with the Holy Spirit. But based on their understanding of the Old Testament, they would think something like this. These 121 people, they're not kings, they're not prophets, they're not priests, there's nothing special about them. God only pours out his Spirit on special people for special duties. These people are common folk, and God doesn't pour out his Spirit on them. You see, Peter used the prophecy of Joel to show them that things were different. Now, under the new covenant, it was just as God said it would be. Now, the Holy Spirit was poured out upon all who would believe and receive, even the common folk. Now, God offered a new covenant relationship, and part of the new covenant was the outpouring of the Spirit for all who receive it in faith. The idea is repeated several times for emphasis. <laughs> and also on my maid servants and on my men servants. You see, in this latter time, all the servants of the Lord will be filled with His Spirit in this unique and powerful way. Under the new covenant, every believer can receive the full measure of the Spirit and be used in a special and wonderful way. You know, sometimes the common churchgoer simply wants a building to worship in, a nice service that isn't too offensive, and to hear a good sermon. And after that, he thinks, leave me alone. That is not New Covenant Christianity, which sees the work of the ministry as belonging to the people, not to the clergy. The clear teaching of the scripture says that the work of the ministry belongs to 
all the people of God. And it is the job of God-appointed offices and ministries to equip the people of God for this. That's in Ephesians chapter 4, starting at verse 7. Now, Joel saw it hundreds of years before the fulfillment, that God has a unique empowering of the Holy Spirit for all who belong to the new covenant. So today, believe him for it, receive it from him, and walk in the empowering of the Holy Spirit that God supplies and thank him for such a generous outpouring under the new covenant.